Oh, hello, hello, and welcome once again to another broadcast of a Beatles program that we call Things We Said Today. This is a weekly show that centers on what's going on in the world of the Beatles newswise. I'm Ken Michaels, best known for my syndicated radio program on the Beatles called Every Little Thing, being joined by my co-host, Mr. Beatles Examiner, that being Steve Marinucci. Hello, everyone. <laughs> How you doing, Steve? I'm doing fine. And Hello. Hello, everyone. We have a couple of special guests with us on the phone. And Very special guests. We have talked about uh, this movie called Good Old Frida on several of our shows, and we're proud to have with us a special guest on the phone, Frida Kelly herself. And uh, Kathy McCabe was one of the producers of the film of Good Old Frida, who was a guest on a previous show. Good to have both of you with us. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. I'm glad to be able to talk to you anyway. We're very happy that you joined us here for our show. Um, I, I just uh, got a chance to see the screener. And I got to tell you that um, I echo the words of Steve, and I just think this is a... Uh, a phenomenal film, and it's it's uh, emotionally charged, uh, especially towards the end of the film. I can just tell all the. I, know, the very... I was tired around that time, and I mean, they caught me on camera uh, where I just slightly lost it. <laughs> but that was about two thirty in the morning, you know, and I've been working in the day and then come home to record. So, oh. you know, I just um, I know I left a few people out, but I just. Towards the end, it just got to me. <laughs> Sorry. That's well. That's quite fine. I mean, you're just being real, which is one yeah. of the special yeah. things about this movie yeah. is is to see you. Well, when when you start thinking of everybody, you know, I'm sure other people would be in the same boat. You just, you know, it, it, it just dawns on you how many people have gone. You know, that mm -hmm. I knew and 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 did love very much. You know. Right. I just want to start this interview by bringing up what you say at the very beginning of, of the movie, which is a statement of irony. You basically say, who would want to hear the story of a secretary? Well, and I honestly didn't think anybody would, you know. <laughs> you know, hello, I, you know, what, I'm, I'm not as big as, you know, other people in, in the posh. Uh Yeah, but the fact of the matter is that you worked for the biggest band in the world. And even though you didn't know back then that they would become the worldwide phenomenon, in fact, you even mentioned it in the film that you thought you thought they would be big, but probably not so much going past England. No, no. Could never visualize what was going to happen. I don't think anybody did. I don't think I was alone on that one, you know. Hmm. Nobody could. Even they couldn't. No, no. That's what I mean. I mean, you know... You know, the pe and even the people I piled around with, the, you know, the, the girls that I piled around with in Liverpool at the time, um, that we were all like Beatles fans, you know, um, none of us could visualize. Right, right. But you, you'd have to realize at, at this point, you know, what a unique place in time and what a unique position you were in that there must be millions oh. of fans around the world that want to hear your story. Well, you know, really, it started off just really trying to tell my grandson, you know, about what I'd got up to in my youth, because I do regret not talking to my father and asking him a lot of things, and uh, and I thought my daughter said to me, oh, come on, Mum, you know, get your act together and put it down before your memory box goes, and and then I thought, well, you know what, yeah, okay, so I need just needed that little push, you know, with my grandson coming along. Mm. Well, we're very happy that you're doing this. Now that the film has been has gone through the film festival circuit and is is going to is being released nationally, has the reaction to the film surprised you? Has has I mean, because in San Francisco when I saw it, everybody was just so thrilled after the after the screening. Well, I saw, I saw it twice, and yeah. and they were they were so thrilled. And now that people are able to see it, uh, you know, you're going to these public events like the one last night. Uh, in L.A. at the Apple Store. Has the reaction surprised you? Definitely, definitely. I'm quite um, overwhelmed by it all, to be quite truthful. You know, um, I, just, I just didn't visualize all this, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm just pleased everybody likes it. Yeah. Kathy, well, well, do, do you have a comment about that? I mean, you guys took it through the film festivals and you saw the reaction there. Has the has the the growth in the reaction has you know especially now that it's out nationally has that surprised you? 
Oh, yes. <laughs> I think uh, Ryan, Frida, and I are all totally surprised. I mean, when we first started it, it, it was a conversation about maybe we could make a little DVD, something Frida could have with her when she did her little talks and um, put down her stories for Niall. And none of us ever dreamed we would it, it would get this kind of reaction. I mean, I just checked before we went on the air and um, on the iTunes chart because it's available in theaters, iTunes, and video on demand. And it was released today, and it's number eight on the iTunes chart, wow. which is crazy. It's <laughs> so amazing. We, we don't know what quite what to make of it, except for everyone seems to love Frida's story. We have men telling us um, that you know, we've seen men crying at the end of this thing because it's so emotional, that last part of the movie, that uh, mm-hmm. we had a, um, a fellow write to us today. He, he wrote a, an article about the film on the rap, and he, he said that um, at the end of it, he was in puddles of tears and had to use his empty popcorn bag to wipe his face. <laughs> wow. And uh, so, yeah, we're all astonished at the whole phenomenon that's, that's going on here. We're very proud of the film, and uh, Ryan, the director, did an amazing job working with Frida and to be with her when she was remembering these stories that she hadn't thought of in 50 years was really very special. And she remembered a slew of them. You know, they all those memories just all came rushing back. And um, it was a beautiful experience. She did an amazing job in this film. One take Frida, we called her. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, Kathy... Kathy she would just nail it on the first take, and we, we would... You know, she would tell a story, and we'd say, well, we don't have to re-record that because it was perfect the way you did it. So it was amazing. It was really an amazing experience. Well, Kathy, one of the things that I love most about this film, I was just saying it before, is that Frida is so real and genuine, and that comes across immediately in this film. And uh, I did cry myself at the very end as well. (laughs) I am not embarrassed to admit it. I do want to ask you a few questions about from the production end, because uh, I liked all the interviews that were there in, in the film. Uh, Tony Barrow was in there, Billy Kinsley, uh, members of the Forum Most. What was the process of going about some of the people to be interviewed in the film? And I would have thought since, you know, there are a lot of uh, people uh, since since Frida worked for Brian, uh, Brian Epstein, as well as for the Beatles with the fan club. Um, I was wondering if maybe you might have approached certain people like Billy J. Kramer, Jerry Marsden, people like that, Cilla Black, maybe to be involved in, in this film. And also, Frida, did you work with those people as well? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, you know, I mean, I was Brian Epstein's secretary, and they were on the, you know, they were on his book, so I, I didn't just type letters for the Beatles or I actually typed everybody's wages, wage slips. Um, mm. You know, I'd done the contracts and everything, so I was working for all Brian Epstein's horses. But... I understand where you're coming from over, you know, Billy and Jerry. I mean, I saw Jerry last year. I just saw Billy last night. I'm still friendly with them. Um, But the original idea was just to tell Niall, you know, how I started the fan club or how I met the Beatles, how I started the fan club, what went on and how I ended it. So really it it didn't start off as a Beatles thing, although the Beatles are, you know, actually photographs and everything, but it was just me talking to Niall. Um, and then, you know, when they, they suggested other people come in, and I said, well, I'd like the foremost, because, you know, I see them all the time in Liverpool, and they were on our books. And um, then, you know, Tony Barrow doesn't do a lot now, um, but then Tony very kindly said, Frida, I, I, you know, I'd love to do something for you. Mm-hmm. And then Andrew McCartney said, I definitely want to do something for you. So that's how it, it came about, you know. Um, and then, of course, you know, I didn't think, it, it, you know, not, um, Ryan would even get 90 minutes. You know, I just thought it'll only last about half an hour to an hour. <laughs> um, and <laughs> so, you know, there was so much even afterwards that I liked that hadn't gone in, hadn't gone in. Uh, yeah. But hopefully 
a little bit more going in the DVD because, you know, I'm looking forward to the DVD coming out so all those Kickstarter people can get the DVD. Yeah. yeah. When we first started talking about doing this and, and uh, Frida and Ryan and I had our first meeting, it became obvious to us immediately that Frida's stories were so compelling and she had so much to say that, that this film was about Frida. It, it was not a, a Beatles film per se about, you know, the whole history of the Beatles. And it was what she did during those um, 11 years that she was uh, with them from the very early days before we ever knew about them here in America. And um, she had, we have 40 hours of footage with, with Frida and, you know, the movie's 86 minutes long, so she's right. There's a, a whole lot of stuff we weren't able to put in, and uh, we are working hard on DVD extras right now, so there will be um, a lot of extra goodies on the DVD when it comes out on December 3rd. Mm. Are you looking at one or two discs? <laughs> this, this could be a mini-series, the way, the way she was coming up with all these stories. Mm-hmm. I remember one of the questions in San Francisco. Somebody was going, it has to be two discs, has to be, has to be. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm, 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 I'm rooting for that. Have you made any decisions about, uh, are there going to be other, any other related products, possibly a book or a, or a soundtrack, or is there any chance of something like that? Well, <laughs> you know, one step at a time, you know, let me get the film out of the way and then the DVD. <laughs> okay. Okay. I I'm not trying. To, I, I, I just, I'm not trying. I'm not trying sorry? to rush you, but uh, no, that's <laughs> that's 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 fine. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, Kathy, um, how did you go about choosing the music for the film? And um, how did you how did you get the clearance to use? I think it's four Beatles songs in there. Yes. Um, well, <laughs> if you're making a movie about Frida Kelly, a lot of doors will open for you that won't normally open, and it's a clear testament to the regard in which the Beatles and Apple and everyone hold Frida, that we were able to um, have our meetings and and end up getting four Beatles songs um, for this for the film. I mean, it, it's we as far as we know, we're the first independent film to ever be given this permission. It's like extremely rare and. We ended up getting the permission six weeks before the world premiere. <laughs> so it was uh, really down to the wire there. And what we wanted to do with the rest of the music, Frida had a very special request that she wanted in the film, and that was Ketty Lester's song, Love Letters, because that was the song Bob Willer would play at the end of the lunchtime cavern sessions to end the session and all the mm. pictures would file out then, and um, that that song actually ended up being the most expensive song that we had to license because uh, <laughs> Brad Pitt had used it in a film in the past few years, "Killing Killing Me Softly" or something like that. So it has mm -hmm. become a little bit of a commodity. But the other songs, of course, we weren't going to have more than four Beatles songs, but we really wanted to choose a soundtrack that had um, all the songs that oh, they really loved, yeah. that they played when they were a young band. These are all songs they covered. And um, Frida can tell you about Anna, for instance. Yeah, I definitely wanted Anna in, because that was one of the songs that I always got John to sing. Um, you know, because I used to just shout out from my little corner <laughs> in, in the cabin. Um, I used to just lean on the wall and just look up at him and you know, I mean, there was talk between us and everything, and but I, I, I John just, I mean, there's loads of stuff. I, I love John singing Slow Down, mm. and, you know, um, all the others, and loads of George stuff, because George done a lot in the cabin. You know, he sang quite a lot in the early days. Um, but I, I just love John singing Anna. So uh, I said to Ryan, you know, can we have that one in, please? That, which kind of brings up a question of what are some of the songs that we haven't heard you know, that they did in those days that, that you can recall? Um, oh, right. You know, there was Three Cool Cats, The Sheik of Arab Bay, um, uh, Red, what's, Red Set and Sunset, Special oh, yeah. Mute Joe. Yeah. You know, um, what's it? Absolutely loads, you know, the, the 
were just dark memories off for me. Mm-hmm. I mean, they used to do like Love of the Love, which they gave to Scylla. They used to do um, the one they gave to the Stones. They used to do I uh, Billy Jay, I Want to Hold Your Hand. Yeah. Um, uh, secret, uh, George used to sing, uh, Do You Want to Know a Secret? With a real good Liverpool accent. <laughs> <laughs> he has a thickest accent. Yeah, he has a thickest accent, George. Yeah. I want to ask you, uh, Frida, about Brian Epstein, uh, because I think even the most um, competent people in the world, if given the job of managing the Beatles, it would have been a tough task, a very demanding uh, job to have. Was Brian really someone who you felt was in control of managing the group, or were there times when it all got to him? Because you do say in the, in the, the film that there were moments when he threw temper tantrums. Yeah, I mean, you know, he was very highly strong. Um, he was a hard boss, you know. Um, and he, I said, there's one clip in the film, you know, where I definitely would have got the sack, <laughs> only for John. Um, so, he, you know, he didn't like you making mistakes. Uh, but I tell you what, if you made a mistake, you never made it again. <laughs> you made sure you didn't make it again. Um, one thing that's not in the film, I remember typing a letter. And I left the comma out. I know you don't do commas nowadays on certain things. But I left the comma out. And he circled it in big red ink, you know, uh, for me to go back and type the whole letter again. But he did, you know, he didn't have cut and paste or anything. You know, it was all like carbon. And, uh, you, you know, you had the uh, carbon copy underneath. and But I never left that comma out. <laughs> wow. But he, 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 he was a hard boss. Was, but um, you respected him for that. Um, but he was also a good boss. I mean, you know, he used to take me out occasionally, you know, and take me to the theatre. And you know, I part, you know, I went to his parties and his family's home. Um, so I think I, you know, I think he must have thought I was quite good because um, when I handed him my notices, he wouldn't have it. Mm, that's one of the most poignant moments of the film. Mm-hmm. Is yeah. is the time when. Uh, the Beatles and Brian were moving to London and they wanted you to go with them and you said yeah. you were going to stay I in Liverpool. I couldn't go. And I did not, honestly, you know, it doesn't come over in the film how how uh, surprised I was uh, that they didn't accept my notice, you know, because I'd already got another job to go to. You know, um, I was going to work for Ray McFall at the cavern. I was going to be his secretary. Huh. And I left to the last minute about a week before you know, because I didn't want to leave. But, well, I had, you know, I had to, you know. Um, and then when Epi turned around and said to me, you know, um, you know, you, you're staying. And I went, no, I'm not. You know, I was convinced. Because I didn't know he'd been to see my father. You know, my father didn't tell me. Um, it wasn't until Epi told me that, no, we don't want you to go. So um, that was quite nice. You know, I thought, well, they, they must approve of me. <laughs> Well, for people that haven't seen the film, your father didn't want you to go. And didn't you say no. that your father was ill and you needed to take care of him? Yeah, well, first of all, you know, it, what, what's not in the film either is um, my father didn't want me to take the job in the beginning. You know, the tables reversed when I told him, you know, at home that I, I was going to work for them. I didn't say the Beatles because I knew that wouldn't go down very well. Um, he went to see Brian Epstein. And then he came back and uh, said to me, you're not taking that job, but, you know, there's no future in it. And I went, <laughs> and in the end, I pleaded with him, and, and he said, you know, that won't even last a year, you know. And I said, well, you know, I'm only 17, give me the year. You know, anyway, he relented and said, okay. And then I, I always remember the words I said to him. I said, that I'll knuckle under them. I'll go. Because he wanted me to work for, you know, the government, the civil service, when he's 17, he's going to start thinking of pensions or all this lot. But, of course, he did. He was just looking out for me, wasn't he? Right. So um, that <laughs> job that he didn't think would last a year ended up maybe 11 years. <laughs> when London came up um, and he said, no, I wasn't going, you know, and I did try different ways of trying to persuade him. But the bottom line was I knew by, by his face at a certain point that, I, he wasn't going to budge on this one, so uh, it got. And he wasn't well at the time. You know, something had happened in the family which affected him, and um, and I thought, well, I can't do this. You know, 
really to my father because I knew deep down I was as stubborn as him because if I'd have gone to London pride wouldn't have let me come back and um, I'm sure you know when he was ill he wouldn't have asked me to come back pride would you know we were both as bad as each other really you know um, pride wouldn't have asked me to come back so I thought no you know I can't do this to my father so although I didn't want to give the job up you know my, my father was a lot more important to me well, it says something about you, and it says something about your character. Well, there, no, right? I'm, I'm, I'm sure other people would think the same. You know, come on, I'm sure you, you would do that for your parents. You actually say in the in the film that a job is still a job, even though you're working for the Beatles. Well, it is, isn't it? You know, but I mean, of course, you know, I was desperate to go to London. You know, I had it all planned with my best friend who worked uh, for Nems Enterprises at the time, Laurie McCaffrey, um, you know. Because Epi, Epi did offer us a really good deal to go to London. So we had it all planned, you know, where we were going. I mean, you know, both of us were so excited. And then for my father to drop the bomb like, you are not going. I thought, oh, God, you know. <laughs> so I tried my, my hardest to persuade him, but he wasn't looking. I was very lucky, wasn't it? You know, he decided to, well, okay, we keep you on. and You can be our rep up in Liverpool. But I did get to London on a regular basis. I mean, he didn't have a problem with me going to London, um, you know, and staying over the weekend and staying a few days. He just didn't want me leaving home, really. Mm -hmm. When it became apparent that they were going to break up, Frida, that uh, it it looks from the film that you had it, that was really a difficult period for you too, because you kind of didn't want to give up. You didn't want to let go of the fan club. You didn't want to call it call it quits. Is that is that is that correct? Or did you well, realize at, at some point that you had to do it? Well, you know, I mean, I was 10 years older then. I was like 27 and I was married and um, I had my son and I wanted more children. So, you know, I was going that road, down that road. And, of course, they were all matured out of us and, you know, had wives and children. And plus, you know, I'm running a fan club, but for a group that doesn't exist, really. You know, they went out on the road. They were in the recording studios and... They weren't together as much as they had been in the past. And then when I then found out I was pregnant, you know, I thought, well, you know, this is it with me. Um, and that's, you know, when I told them. And that, I was very surprised that they decided to uh, close it down, you know, because, you know, there was other girls in the office and I trained them up and everything. And I, I did argue to not hard, but I, I did sort of say, you know, you know, there's no need for you to pack it up just because I'm leaving. You know, plenty of other people will carry it on and everything. But it was George. She said, no. You know, Freddie, you were there in the beginning and you're there at the end. Let's call it a day. You know. There's never been an, another official, you know, fan club you right. know, on that day. That shows how loyal. For everything. They were really great with the fans. You know, they really um, looked after the fan club, you know, because they knew that those fans put them where they were as well. And that's why I tried to get over as much as I could in this film how important the fans were to them at the beginning. They never, ever complained. And I know it sounds as if I'm just saying it, but I'm not. It's the truth. When they came in the office, I'm sure they really wanted to throw all the books at me at times, you know. <laughs> but I would say, but, you know, why are you there? Why are you just sitting there? Or why are you doing this? Or why are you waiting for the phone call? You know, can you just sign this? Can you just sign that? Can you just answer that question? <laughs> that was one little pest. <laughs> well, it tells you how loyal George was and the Beatles were to you, that they didn't want to keep it going without you. Yeah, yeah. They were, you know. I suppose we've been together for so long, and we were all teenagers together, you know. Yeah, I found it interesting that in the film you you say that you were most close to Ringo's mother as, of all the parents of the of the Beatles, and yeah, I just, I just I loved her. You know, I mean, I went to that house every week for years. You know, she had one son who had left home and was all over the world, and um, I confided a lot in her. I looked upon her as the mother that I didn't have. I mean, I told her all. You know, the girly stories, like who you fancy and who you're going out with and, you know, what dress to wear and, you know, and I was, I was when Richie started going out with Mo, you know, I knew Mo, uh, Mo Cox, you know, 
know, and um, I'm really close to them. So, although I, I know it comes over in the film, but, I, you know, I was very close to all the parents. I went to them on a regular basis. I mean, Mimi, I went once a month to Mimi every, hmm. every Tuesday, you know. Yeah. Have you had any contact with Ringo or uh, uh, outside of, uh, I won't spo- spoil the film, but outside of the film, have you had any contact, personal contact with Ringo or Paul? I personally haven't been in touch with him. I, I wouldn't do that. You know, it's a long time now. I mean, I did see him um, when he played in Liverpool the last time. Mm-hmm. You know, when George and I went to see him. But I wouldn't go knocking on the, you know, <laughs> the stage door and go, hello, I'm Frida, I knew you 40 years ago, you know, <laughs> no, I just went home, you know, and the same with Paul, I saw Paul uh, Lipper, you know, he comes back to Liverpool every year to give the certificates out at uh, the music college, right. and um, I went there once, you know, uh, but the same thing, I just sat the seat and watched him talk to all these students and, and went home, you know. Yeah, he was just there uh, like a couple of weeks ago. That's right, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to thank, we all wanted to thank both of you for everything you've done to promote the film, the, the articles, the the interviews, the pictures, everything. It, you know, it's people like you that have made this film. Definitely. You know, without you know, people like yourselves and all those people that donated and everything, this would not have got off the ground. Right. So I would like to thank everybody through both of you, and also, you know, to thank you both personally. Well, thank you very much, Frida. I appreciate that very much. I, I know we both do. Yeah, it course. means it means a lot. It means, yeah. definitely means a lot. We're very glad that the film is finally happening and that everybody's going to be able to see it. I know, like I've said a couple of times um, after we saw it, uh, I took my wife to see it in Berkeley the weekend after you. Went back home, when you went back home, uh, uh, and Ryan was there. And my wife's not the big Beatles fan that I am, but she likes the Beatles. And we yeah. couldn't stop talking about the film all the way home. She was absolutely, oh. th- she was thrilled. She loved it. Oh, and nice. So I, I, the the reaction, I think the reaction is going to be, is just going to be amazing across the board. There's going to be a lot of people who, you know, who really, this isn't a, a movie for, you know, the the real hardcore fans. This is for everybody, and I think everybody's going to love it. I agree. Thank you. That'd be great. Think... And if you could spread the word for us that it's out today. Today is September sixth. And... I just I just published an article uh, just about an hour ago, and I'm going to put up another one tonight. Uh, another one. So I will get it out there definitely. definitely. Yeah. The, the 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 main key is right now that the the list of theaters where it's screening. Mm-hmm. It is um it's growing and that's I was I was actually going to ask you that where it, it's starting in LA then it moves to New York then what's the plan after that Well Magnolia Pictures is our distributor bless mm-hmm. them they um they're crazy about the film and they're promoting it wonderfully well and they um let me see they they've got it playing in theaters already if you go on to goodoldfrida.com, our website, the front page of that home page lists all the screenings that we've got so far. And what people are doing, people are actually calling their theaters, and they're, especially their independent theaters, and saying, you've got to get good old Frida here. <laughs> and, and, and the theaters are called, they know what to do. They call Magnolia and say, we want to screen it, and they arrange for the screening. So... It's kind of a, a demand thing, and we've heard such wonderful feedback from fans and reviewers and people that have seen it. So I just want to let everybody know if you want to see it, call your theaters if it's not playing in your city, and it will mm-hmm. happen. It will happen. My uh, my gym runs a little thing about upcoming films, and it's been. And I looked up there one day, and there were, well, there was the poster, and I went, "Oh my." <laughs> <laughs> oh my so god. It's been it's been running every I mean the, the it's the the publicity has been out there everywhere. It really has. Yeah. Yeah, I've been looking well, at the website goodoldfrida.com almost every day just yeah. for updates. So and There's a Facebook uh we have a Facebook page too and 
between those two pages, we, we update them every day with the latest news to get it out there to the fans and all of our supporters. Uh, Frida mentioned our Kickstarter supporters. We, we could not have made this film without them. If we hadn't made that initial fund, funding, um, it wouldn't have happened. And we exceeded our funding. And, um, you know, and the rest is history. It, it, it got made. But, it, but if not for those backers, it, it, it wasn't happening. And we just want to thank them for their patience because originally the DVD was going to be out much earlier. But when this uh, distribution deal happened, um, it pushed everything back about six months. And it's, it's the absolute best thing that could happen for the film, for the fans, for Frida, for everybody to get that distribution deal because it'll be able to see, be seen on a wide basis now rather than people just, you know, ordering it on, you know, buying it and keeping it at home. So um, it's it's really wonderful and crazy what has happened. <laughs> we just can't believe it. It's, mm. it's just wonderful. And it's a, that Frida, she's one heck of a storyteller. She says she's Irish, so she knows how to tell stories. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, we'd like to make our permanent co-host of the show, and uh, if she's, yeah. anytime she wants yeah. to come on, well, yeah, she might do that. <laughs> well, thank you very much again, and um, we'll be in touch. Thank yes. you, thank, thank you, you guys, thank you, Kathy. Yeah, thank okay, you so much bye. for being on the show. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye, bye. And that puts the show to a close. We want to thank Frida Kelly and Kathy McKay for being special guests here on the program. I'm Ken Michaels for things we said today, thanking you for joining us, and I'll see you next time. And this is Steve Marinucci saying it was very exciting to have Frida and Kathy on the show, and we will definitely see you next time, and we'll hope you, you'll be with us. <laughs>